Welcome to Still Entitled, the Adam Savage Project. I'm Norm. I'm Adam. And I'm Mark. Mark Rumor! <laughs> <laughs> Special guest. Here. It seems crazy that you have not yet been on the podcast. <laughs> yeah, this is perfect. I love it. Or been in the cave. The That's cave is also crazy. <laughs> um, what the first time we met wasn't at Simone's Christmas party a couple years ago, right? No, we I, met before that. Yeah, I think yeah. I'd, I'd seen you when you did the Brain Candy tour. Right. I came backstage with Michael and we got to meet in the oh, flesh. Oh, that's right. That's yeah. right. Yeah. Um, I met uh, the King's Ransom of YouTubers through Michael Stevens. He really is the gateway <laughs> drug to yes, all the YouTubers. That's right. <laughs> if there ever was one, sure. Yes. So that was actually why when we went to Perth, Australia, no, not Perth, um, uh, way up north, uh, when we went to uh, a, one, of part, one of the cities in our Australian tour, I introduced him to John Plant, uh, <sighs> Primitive Technologies guy. Oh, wow. Is he in Australia? Yeah. I had no idea. Maybe we shouldn't say that. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. I'm gonna, there'll be parts of this episode I'm going to bleep out. <laughs> okay. Names, locations. <laughs> beep, beep. Which, which, by the way, this can I take a time out to say, if, if I do say something and it's like I want to rephrase it, I can, you can go back. You can 100%. Yep. Okay, yep. Yes. Cool. Yeah. Absolutely. They've, yeah. they've heard that part already. So they'll know they'll be the, the jump cuts. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> they can fill in the blanks. Uh, well, welcome to the cave. It seems like it, it, that's crazy that this is your first visit. Um, yeah, because clearly we swim in the same waters. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> and and I will say, I think you said everyone says this, but coming in and seeing it in three dimensions, it's just next level. I've seen it on so many of your videos in two D, but three D is that's where it's at. It's um, it's way more hoardery. In 3D, <laughs> isn't it? Yes. I, I, we're going through a difficult <laughs> phase right now. You're coming at a point in which I'm getting rid of a lot of stuff. So you're going to have to leave with some of these motorcycle helmets. Yeah, I okay. will. I'm going to take some. But it's, this, it's like a beautiful type of hoardery. It's like an artistic hoardery. High functioning. High, High functioning, functioning hoardery. Yep, yep. Yeah. Um, and we're in a transitional state. I got a new storage space. So we're trying to. I'm trying to be Marie Kondo about clearing out the stuff I don't need. <laughs> the problem is you got so much freaking cool stuff, right? Um, I just came to a an interesting maker's perspective, however, mm -hmm. in which I keep everything because everything I keep, I keep because it's got some level of interest. It sparks to me. joy. Yeah, it, it sparks, sparks joy. joy or it sparks like, oh, that could be useful, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And I've started, I've come to the realization that. Half of that stuff I can get rid of because it's shapes that I thought were interesting and that I think, oh, maybe I'll use that in a thing. But that's a prop-based sort of ideation. Mm -hmm. And that's a certain kind of building that I don't do anymore very mm -hmm. much. Because now when I costumes. Do, mostly costumes. Right. Right. So when I have to build props, they're almost always fully scratch built. Mm -hmm. So I don't need to save all these old airsoft guns and paintball crap and stuff like that. Right. So I'm mm. just slowly sloughing it off and making this much more of a directed costume shop with the ability to make props from scratch. But, but you're also not yeah. the builder that would like have a digital repository of shapes and then want to browse through that way and 3D print one. Like you would want something immediate if you were to build something. Uh, something. No, actually now I see that the prop builds I do are much more sort of focused and directed mm. to replicate a specific thing right. rather than like, oh, this is a cool shape. I could use that in a, something someday. Yeah. That's the kind of stuff I'm getting rid of. Yeah. So like I have two pianos, <laughs> just the mechanics, <laughs> the hammers and all yeah, the little yeah, linkages. Sure, sure. I have two pianos worth of linkages and it's like, I don't need those anymore. <laughs> I haven't used wow. them in the 25 years I've been storing them. Might as well let them go to someone who will use them. Yeah, I tend to be sort of a minimalist. So, yeah. But, but, but I love existing in spaces like this for short periods of time. But what is your, like, you save your hero pieces from your videos, Yeah, you? like, I have, like, the world's largest Nerf gun, world's largest super. So I do have those, like, in a storage. Uh, and we're, we're kind of building a shop, and they will be in, like, the shop. But, yeah. Sometimes I will scrap a thing though. We did one like a rock skipping robot uh, made from like a uh, what do you call those? Like you launch the shock a skeet shooter. Skeet shooter. Yeah. Thank you. Mm -hmm. uh, and some of them I'll just take down afterwards because yeah. it's like yeah. But but for the most part, the big ones I'll save. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I guess I mean, that's the difference. Maybe we're the same. You just have made so much more cool stuff than me. Though. Well, I, mean, I, I am also a very profligate collector. This is also true. Yeah. Wall Street Journal had that story I felt most seen when the, you have a box of cords that you will never use, 
right? Like a bit, everyone has a bin of USB cords. Yes. But this is this is a whole nother. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> I, you know, it's funny. I, I like talk to crowds and uh, I'll do appearances like mm-hmm. I'm sure yeah, you yeah, do. Sure. And people ask you questions about your process and about how you store and move things around mm-hmm. the cabin. Uh, and one of the ones that this is a joke I've been working on, which <laughs> is to explain to a crowd that every one of us has a drawer in the kitchen yeah. that you haven't seen the bottom of in a decade. That's right. Right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yep. And there's a way, to, my, my, like, I really love that shared experience, mm-hmm. but I also feel like there's a laugh in there somewhere. And I've been trying to find it when I talk to crowds about it, but I don't get the <laughs> laugh of recognition. Yeah. So I think I, my, my biggest problem as a writer when I'm trying to make a joke is that I don't set up my jokes enough. I, mm. I suffer Chris Rock's admonition that you got to set your joke you up really up. solid. <laughs> uh, so I, I got to work on that one. <laughs> Yeah, I feel like there is something there. I, th- I think that is the truth of it. Like everyone has that experience. It's just like your problem is you just have made and have dealt with and have seen so much cool stuff that your drunk drawer is just by definition much larger than everyone else is. <laughs> <laughs> All right, but you're about to make your junk drawer even larger. Yeah. Can we talk about your your yeah? Your, let's your, talk about your newest my, escapade. My, perver- my proverbial drunk drawer. Yeah. You are you are matriculating from an itinerant television appearer mm-hmm. to uh, to a, a person with a show on television. Yeah. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank Welcome. you. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. So uh, yeah, I mean, so I'm doing a show with Jimmy Kimmel uh, <laughs> called Revenge of the Nerd. That's the name of it, which is that was Jimmy's idea. That's great, right? Because yeah. so the the point the premise is we're pranking people who violate social norms. So people might have seen like my glitter bomb video, mm-hmm. where yeah, someone stole a package off my porch. That made me sad. So I was like, you know what? I'm an engineer. I could do something about this. So we get revenge on them when they steal the package. They open it. Four cameras recording them. Glitter, fart spray, the whole thing. Uh, so. I told Jimmy, I was like, dude, because I've been on a show a few times, like, let's prank one of your friends. Let me, like, come up with something. And he's like, man, our lawyers here suck. (laughs) He's like, like, everything would be such a pain. Let's just make our own show together. So, uh, yeah, that was like a year ago. And it's just taken forever to, like, get things rolling. But it'll be on Discovery Channel, eight episodes, launches probably this summer. Amazing. Yeah. Congratulations. Thank you. It Thank is, you. It is, uh, I, we'll have to talk. Yes, yes. So, <laughs> so, so the thing is, is like, you know, someone doesn't pick up their dog's poop. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, we'll build a catapult. We'll launch the poop back at their house. This is people mm-hmm. who are violating yeah. social yeah. norms. Start the Larry David style, like things yeah. that annoy you. Things that annoy you. Right. Or like this is what I'm really excited about. Like, uh, you know, not returning your grocery cart to like the little chamber where you're. Yeah. So th- I should say we're going to reward people who do the right thing. So if you do return your cart, a drone comes down or something gives you a hundred bucks. <laughs> right? Oh, nice. But if you oh, don't, no. then we'll have a bunch of remote control ones. And there's just so much here where like. So one flavor is you you kind of move it behind the, their car yeah, and they see it so they get out and move it. And then as soon as they get back in their car, you just back again. keep oh moving God, it back. Or, or you have it like coming towards their car like it looks like the wind. And then they're like, should I get out? And then you stop it. And they're like, okay. And they put it in reverse and then you just floor it. <laughs> Well, you know you're putting cameras car. all over the carts too, right? Yeah, They're camera yeah. platforms. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The what? The carts themselves oh, yeah, 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 are yeah. camera that's platforms. That's right. That's a good point. Yeah, yeah, right? yeah, yeah. You're gonna sit- and then and then they'll come out and they're like, what the heck to get it? And then you just you have them chase it around, but it'll just be just faster than a human. Oh. So then it'll loop back and keep hitting their car. But another important part is like there'll be foam on the front of the carts because. We want all this to be super harmless. Like, right, I don't right. like a prank that's like messes up. So not only is it harmless, so everyone that allows you to cheer for it. But these are punks who are doing the wrong thing. So that further allows the audience at home to be like, I can get behind this. Well, yeah. you've answered one of the questions. One of the problems I have with prank shows is that they're frequently cruel. Yeah, that's right. And I'm never interested in watching someone have a breakdown for for fake reasons yeah like i find that stressful yeah 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 so and I, I, same with me that's not my mo i mean even with the glitter bomb you get a lot of people like oh you should put like paint in that or like acid i mean obviously that's extreme but it's like that, that's just not what i want to do and even these people that do take it like in general i don't press charges like we yeah. come to an understanding it's like all right well they got know. glitter in their house yeah yeah they have, they, they have they have fabulous payoff yeah. in other ways <laughs> do you have um have you had people willing to sign an appearance release? Yes. Wow. So if you see their faces unblurred. So in, in this one, I actually sent some of the footage beforehand to Jimmy. And he's like, dude, you need to get the, the, the facial expressions on these are so great. He's like, you, you can't blur those. So 
one of his producers called them up and worked his magic and somehow. Oh my god! So years ago, uh, there was an article. I can't remember where what publication it was in, but it was by someone whose job was to get appearance releases for cops for oh, the yes, for the show. Cops. Right. Oh. And they said specifically, never hard. What? It was really not a hard Close part of the job mind. because everyone looked at it as a silver lining in a shit deal situation. Right. 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 So it was like, oh, well, at least I'll get on television and maybe <laughs> maybe something good will happen from that. I'll get on television <laughs> like soliciting very a prostitute. <laughs> like, <laughs> look, our president has shown that there's little downside to oh that. Oh, my God. <laughs> and the publicity. But they're pretty diligent on TV. I mean, you guys did it too, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah. It's, it's, well, we always, I mean... So th- where we w- where we ended up with the difficulties was like like you our ethos on MythBusters was never to make a fool out of anybody right yeah mm-hmm. which is why we never did an episode about dowsing which is to hold a fork stick and look for water mm. which is totally bullshit by right, the way yeah, yeah, no yeah, one's yeah, yeah. dowsing's never survived double blind tests I don't care if your grandpa's a dowser <laughs> he's 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 not full of shit. He probably totally believes it. Right. And people may pick up visual cues from the landscape about water, but it's not from the fork stick. That right. being said, right. in order to do an episode about dowsing, I'd have to have a control. I'd have to bring someone on yeah. and I'd have to show them failing yeah. and I'd make them a fool. And that's not the narrative of Mythbusters. I'm surprised that never came up in Mythbusters in other ways. So things like astrology, I mean, just things like but that. We never, so we never did things in which we'd have to prove a negative. Yeah. So we never did astrology or Bigfoot. We did pyramid power and I still regret it. Mm-hmm. I'm sorry about pyramid power. <laughs> um, but yeah, we looked for things. And so at, at one point for one episode, and I'll be very circumspect about how I described this. For one episode, we brought in a quote expert who showed up and was so bad Yeah. We wanted to fire him, but we were already pot committed. We'd spent so much of our budget getting him there and setting up for him that we ended up making him look even more amazing because that was the narrative of our show. Yeah. I will not name him. (laughs) But you know who you are. (laughs) So while you're doing the show, you're still doing YouTube stuff too. Yeah, that's right. So my, yeah, YouTube is still my first love. And I pushed back on the TV thing like a lot. Because it's like, you know, you have people, um, when you have a channel that does well on YouTube, you have TV producers who come out of the woodwork. Yeah. It's honestly, several, one or two emails a week where it's like, hey, let's take what you do on YouTube, only let's put it on TV. <laughs> sure. Where it's like, where I can make less money, I fewer people will see it, and I won't have creative control. Yep. Like, where do I sign? That sounds amazing, <laughs> right? So it's like... That's what's amazing about going out with Kimmel. That's really, really a terrific collaboration. That's because right. Because I think they have a lot of uh, deep know-how, storytelling, yeah. but also dealing with networks. Yeah, that's right. And also, like, um, you know, I was able to get executive producer, but even with Jimmy, like, there's been a few things already that I'm like, Jimmy, I think it should be this way. And he's like, yeah, of course. And he'll send an email and yay, verily, it becomes that way, right? Huh. So having him in my corner yeah. is someone like it's a big. champion and he yep. gets it, like, that makes it a little bit different. So it, it'll be exciting for me just to like see how it works. But again, YouTube is my first love. I plan on making my monthly videos still just as much because I plan mine out. Like I have all my videos for 2020, like really already planned out. Oh, wow. Holy smokes. Yeah. In you different are very, stages. Very, very uh, forward thinking. <laughs> Tomorrow um, I'm, do- I'm filming for my February 2021 video. What? I mean, that's a little. I'm going to JPL, so oh, yeah, because yeah, yeah. so, they the curiosity or the next version yeah, yeah. of the yes, rover yes. launches. Your first first love. That's right, my first <laughs> first love at NASA. Uh, so so yeah, we'll film that. But yeah, I have, I have all my videos planned out, and so they're in different stages, which is why I'm able, hopefully, to do some bigger stuff. Is you know, it just takes a long time for some of these builds, and yeah, yeah. And the television show is gonna absorb your life like a sponge uh, i know i know but it makes it's, me so sad it, because it, i uh, people keep promising that won't be the case but they're people who are incentivized to tell me that and so yeah. i trust you more than i trust them it's you're going to have to you are the only one who's going to fight for the space mm. and you're just going to have to kind of find places to take it and actually also build infrastructures to deal with it like right. I was uh, I, early in Mythbusters tenure. I hired my first assistant, mm-hmm. and to be frank, all the other Mythbuster hosts made fun of me for having an assistant. Yeah. But later, they all had assistants. <laughs> 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 like you, you definitely need help with the infrastructure once you're branching out. Yeah, and like so, example. What would they do? Like as an example, uh, they'd you? be able to like take care of stuff that. <sighs> 
some of the more quotidian stuff that sucks up time mm-hmm. that you don't have to do. Right. But like, you know, it's not required that I screw 150 screws on this thing. Got it, or got it, got they it. can do research for me on got other it. stuff, other okay. projects, keep things burning. Got it. Along. Got where it. my attention that's the thing is that the show will just it it's your time it definitely it's will time. take up, but it's also that mental energy because mm. every episode is this puzzle to solve. Yeah, yeah. Of yeah. What do you want to happen? What's possible? What did you actually get? Right. I'm terrified. Like I'm excited, <laughs> but also I'm like, I'm fully aware this is a situation where it's like, I have no idea what, if I, if I knew what I was signing myself up for, I probably wouldn't have done it, but it's just like, I need to do it. Oh, 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 I have, I have such an important piece of advice. Okay, good, thank you. The first rough cut yeah. will make you want to cut yourself. Oh, thank you. Right, thank f- you for preparing me for that. The first <laughs> rough cut will unhinge you because you've made youtube videos yeah, yeah that is a genre that is yours yeah. it is you've made them the way you wanted to make mm-hmm. them it's been organic mm-hmm. you've grown up doing that right. so that's a the specific thing in each video you have a set of invisible algorithms that you yeah. hold it up to to see mm-hmm. this is right mm-hmm. this show is a whole new beast yeah. and it will be its own thing but the first assembly cut is how you all figure out what it's going to be and thus it's not going to be anything that, like it's going yeah. to be kind of weird and misplit paced and there's going to be strange points in it and you're mm-hmm. going to feel like we have no idea what we're doing i'm really glad you said it because honestly that's probably next to time that's my number one fear because i've done stuff i did a thing with shark week last week with, or last year with discovery channel and with the same raw footage they made a cut and i made my youtube video and i may get in trouble for saying this but when i watch like what i did and what they did i'm just like th- what they did feels like typical tv yep like that's it, what their editors are trained for. It's yeah. what the audience, right? Yeah. You know, they, they suspenseful, they build up suspense at a moment that wasn't suspenseful and it felt artificial to me. Mm. And I'm just like, I'm terrified. And I, you know, I've brought this up. Like I need to have real control over the edit because I think that's part of the special sauce of like what I do with the channel. Like I want to be part of that. And I'm terrified it's going to come across as like not my brand and feel like right. typical TV. So the biggest advantage you have is that you've self-produced all your stuff, yeah. right? So that you understand your pace, the character mm-hmm. that you are. Mm-hmm. A lot of people showing up for their first television show have none of that groundwork. True. And what that all means is when you have a problem with the edit, you're not just saying this is wrong you're going to be coming and going, here's how we fix this. Because yeah. I've fixed this authenticity problem in countless videos over the years. Here, let me do a piece of voiceover. We'll shoot one more stinger for this thing, and then we'll use this from the first cut, and it'll make it sing. Okay, good. And so you'll be presenting the solutions along with the problems. Right, as opposed to that just doesn't feel right. Exactly. Yeah, I already prepared them for this. I was like, look, I'm not going to be I'm, – I'm really good at working with people – uh, I'm not going to be a micromanager, but I'm probably going to spend a lot of time in the edit bay on the first one. Mm-hmm. And and Jimmy's like, do not apologize. Don't ever apologize for that. You need to feel proud of this. Totally. This is your thing. So I was like, okay, good. I, I mean, honestly, editing is the most fun part of the whole process. Oh, really? Right? So well, you would I, spend time in the edit I, bay No, sometimes? I don't, but I love, I, I just, I find the, 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 watching it come together. Sure, sure. And then looking at that rough cut and figuring out ways it can be fixed because, like, I think the very first, you know, early on in, in Savage Builds, we just took the first day of building and roughed it out to kind of show Discovery the way we were thinking about mm-hmm. it. Mm-hmm. And it was a great test case because nothing happened in this assembly because it was like, you know, four hours cut down to 20 minutes. Right. But it had all these beats in it mm. that were indicative of how we wanted the show to go. So we got to kind of allow Discovery to see where we were going to go with the cinematic look and right. the specific ways in which we wanted the narrative. That's well, the problem solving. So you're problem yeah, solving. In, it's exactly. like a movie, right? Pre-production, so, when to yeah. film, and when you edit. You have a huge leg up in that you've already been a, you've already, you are a problem solver in this realm. Right. You're yeah. not brand new and you're yeah. not just creating more problems. You're actually building right solutions for that. Yeah, no, that's good to hear. Because that is like one thing. Like I still edit all my own videos, which people think is crazy, but it's like, that's, I like that. That's, I think that's the fun part. Yeah. yeah. And so it's like, you know, I see this thing that YouTubers do sometimes. This is like a, a little bit of a soapbox for me, but it's like they have a little bit of success and they feel like, oh, well, the script is I need to scale up and I need to now hire an editor and someone behind the camera and someone to write and, and they need to make it bigger and bigger. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And it's like for what like what is your goal if that's like really what you're going for then you could but it it, to me it's the equivalent of like cranking up the treadmill it's exciting at first you get to do these things but at some point the dopamine wears off and now you're sprinting at this really fast pace 
And like, that's the definition of burnout mm -hmm. when you're running really fast and you're not, you're, you're putting all this input in and you're not getting the same output you were getting. So I have like very protective about like, I have a really small team. Like mm -hmm. I just hired my first full-time person and like, because I like this, like yeah. I'm protecting yeah. that little flame of creativity mm -hmm. and people are like, Oh, you should write a book and do a podcast and go on tour with respect. I know you've done all those things. Adam. <laughs> I'm currently yeah. doing all three of those things, but yes. But I'm like, I'm like, no, like, unless yeah. it's like a hell yes, it's like a no for me. And I really just, you know, cause I also have a family and stuff. Yeah. Well, that's, so the four years since I've been doing Mythbusters has been a very slow accretion of our core team here, which has grown very slowly. Right. But the best part about that is the collaboration. Right. Like, the, the uh, tested producer, cameraman, editor, Joey Famelli, mm -hmm. and I, like, the, there's so many little beats of the way test videos get edited that grew out of he and I just watching cuts and being like, what if we did this? Right, right, and right. Each of us bringing ideas and all of us bringing ideas. Like, yeah. watching that process is yeah. great. And it's not just hiring a transactional thing to do a yeah. thing for That's you. That's right. It's the collaboration. It's very collaborative. Yeah, yeah. totally, totally. I'm very excited to see this show. <laughs> if there is, uh, if you need, it, look, I'm at your disposal. Okay, I'm happy excellent. to be a consigliere. I know just. Uh, uh, not a guy who leaves poop on the side of the road. You mean like to edit? <laughs> <No>. <laughs> to steal a package? No, oh, whatever you need. I'm okay, here for you, Mark. Okay, okay. Whatever you need. Uh, if you need a machine shop, you come on over. Okay, okay. Oh, right. And you're shooting this in the Bay Area. Yeah, Or yeah. somewhat, some in the Bay Area. That's right, because I live up here like you. Uh, so, yeah, the layer where we can kind of come up and ideate and do that stuff will be up here just to make it easier on me. Wee. And then we'll go across the country and they, critically in one party record states, our lawyers have already told us. Because, like, there's certain states that you need permission from both, from both parties, yeah. you know? Uh, Otherwise, it's like a felony, yeah, right? Yeah. Like it's real, it's real crime. Yeah, I mean, I don't want to go into too many details. I will say in this <laughs> in this year uh, for the glitter bomb, I I lawyered up pretty hard and got yeah. like several advice from like to know like if I'm crossing lines and uh, I I mean everything we did, even subtle things, were like was like by the book. So there's ways to do it. You know what's funny though about lawyers? Yeah, is that you start out a thing like from the abstract, you're like, well, we'll just figure out what the rules are, and the answer is. There aren't really yeah. any specific rules. It's more like, what is the safest path the, to take the that assessment. the market will bear that yeah. someone will, that you are protected? That's right. It's managing risk. Right. But even giving someone to tell you like the right percentages on risk and Absolutely. how risky, right? Totally. Because it's in the lawyer's incentive. It's misaligned incentives. They're just going to say like no to everything. You know, someone said this to me at the beginning of my divorce uh, 15, 18 years ago. Yeah. Uh, they said, Look, the problem about bringing lawyers into it, they have to be brought in, but lawyers operate within an adversarial system. Yeah. That is, it's not that they want to do that. That's just how it works. Right. And so it's like this. And yeah. so it's really hard to shift that, that right. perspective. And like the more adversarial they are, like the longer it drags on, the more they get paid, like. So on Mythbusters, the <laughs> legal team at Beyond Productions would sit and watch every single episode, like uh -huh. all six lawyers for Beyond, and they would look for any product names mm -hmm. that were spottable mm -hmm. within that they'd have to go then and blur. And they'd be like <laughs> high-fiving each other for spotting product. No, I know it drives me crazy. It drives me crazy. <laughs> the worst. I, yeah. Off camera, I showed you one of my favorite techniques for obscuring a logo. I'm totally easy. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, what else can you say about your, your projects for the rest of this year? I mean, it's, a, it's still blowing my mind that you have 2020 all. Yeah, yeah already. I'm sort of like a, a yeah. little, I feel a little shame. Yeah, how, how did you, <laughs> I mean, not just get to that point, but let's say a year ago when you were thinking about 2020, like, did you look back and say, these are my dream projects? And yeah, so I've been making videos for, since 2011, so like nine years. And at first there was always the fear that you're going to run out of ideas. Yeah, right. But what I found is it's like you always have or like I always have six months to a year's worth of ideas, like in the right. notebook that you're mm -hmm. always staying in front of. So yeah, it's just, I wish I could, if, if it's like off camera, I'm, I'll rattle off to people every, all 12 videos <laughs> on camera. There's a <laughs> sense where it's like, I, I worry about this a little bit less now than I did when the channel was smaller. Like someone's going to, you know, scoop this sure. idea, yep, yep. especially as the ideas get bigger, more complex. Mm -hmm. I'm more, I'll say one cause I'm pretty confident well, All they, right. they people want to see the, the Mark Rober implementation of an idea. Yeah, but <laughs> also you lose, if you're not the first to do it, it's harder to make a it little as bit impactful. Of gloss. Um, it's very funny traveling around the country with Michael Stevens because mm -hmm. the number, 
of, I mean, obviously, um, the over 25 set was my crowd and the under 25 set yeah. was his crowd, very specifically yeah. split. But the, the, there was a, a clear feeling from all the teenagers that loved Michael Stevens that they all thought he had a super easy job. <laughs> that yeah. they were all like, man, he's just raking it in and not doing <laughs> any coasting. work. And Michael, like in his Q and A, would be like, man, I'm just like you. I just work a lot harder. <laughs> <laughs> he didn't well, say it that arrogantly. I don't want to put words in his mouth, but I've met few people who work as hard as Michael Steve. Well, and that's the thing now. They do like polls for kids in school, and it's like, what do you want to be when you grow up? And it's like now, YouTuber is above astronaut. astronaut yeah. What? And it's like. And yes. I, to me, I want to get like, not self, in China though. I want to get self-righteous and judge that. But then I'm like, wait, hold up. I quit my dream job at NASA to make YouTube videos. <laughs> so it's like, you are literally the demo. I'm literally the embodiment of that poll that gets everyone pissed off. That's hilarious. So, so one video I'll tell you, this is yeah. likely my March video is I'm making a robot, uh, that will set up a room full of dominoes. So awesome. like a gym full of dominoes. So you 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 leave. That's awesome. You turn off the lights. You come back in the morning, and it's like the gym is. Full. So a Roomba that yes, is a so domino. My first thought was Roomba too, and yeah. this is why this has been an idea on my bucket list for like two or three years. And I've tried to go at this like several times. The problem with the Roomba. I don't want to give too much away, but it doesn't scale. Right, right. Because you need to put hundreds of pounds of shit into it, or it has right. to keep going back and getting Go stuff. back. It just does not scale. Both of which are really difficult engineering challenges. Very difficult. To have something that can drive weighing 150 pounds and then drive weighing 100 pounds less than that. Less than that, and the precision you need, and like loading it. Like, how do you oh load it? God. That's a huge problem in and of itself. You know, number file, Matt Parker was here, uh, and he'll be back again in January, oh, cool. but he He's was great. talking about flipping a coin 10,000 times, uh -huh. which he did to his family's great consternation one week. <laughs> but we were talking about building a machine that could flip a coin 100,000 times, uh -huh. and I spent several days diagramming it out only to conclude this is a gigantic problem. This is really hard to solve. Something that could yeah, flip, flip a it. coin and then read its value and then recirculate and flip that coin again. Just yeah. that. Is yeah, a, yeah, that's interesting. You'd almost want to do it like, is it cheating to have it like colored? So like optically you could see, hey, that's no, red not, or blue. That's not, that's not at all, but yeah. that's a great idea. Yeah, because then because otherwise it's harder to read the difference. But then where do you go get it? And how do you, right? Like every second you lose in the flip True. is like another As, week yeah. it'll take right. to do 100,000 okay, okay, flips. Okay, 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 okay. I'm understanding now more. This, so yeah, the yeah, circulation yeah. has to happen quickly. Yeah. A coin has to be gotten to it. You could probably it do it the with- the same coin. It doesn't, actually. Oh, okay. You could probably do it with multiple coins, but- That doesn't necessarily, yeah, yeah. So it, same issue here. It's the scale of it. And like, even, and I'm guilty of this. When you told me that, I was like, oh, I could do that. <laughs> <laughs> and then the more no, you I talked did, about it, it was like, oh, right, the no, scale I did, of it. So here's the one more wrinkle, mm -hmm. is that when Matt did it, he wanted to find out how often it did heads or tails. And at 10,000 flips, a mm. British pound coin, mm. which is my favorite coin, mm. actually landed on its edge 14 times out of 10,000 flips. Wow. So he's flipping it, what, onto a table or something? Mm -hmm. I see. But so it landed on its wow. edge. That's much more annoying. 14 times out of 10,000. <laughs> wow. So the machine I build, I would build, would have to be able to accommodate that. We'd try it with a nickel. <laughs> and see if a nickel lands on its edge out of a hundred. It's going to be less than 14 out of 10,000. Yeah. But we still have to accommodate for it. Why? So I love this idea. What was <laughs> what was the point of him doing this thing? Just to show empirically that... Uh, to show empirically the, the split, but also to see how... To look at literally edge cases uh, when it lands edge on its cases. edge. Uh, literally, that's amazing. <laughs> yeah, so that's that's the thing with this one. So I built a, a one build. It was like a dart board that gets a bullseye every time. Yeah. uses like a Vicon motion capture system, tracks the dart, board moves in like <laughs> 400 great. milliseconds. And up to this point, that had been like my most complex build. But honestly, that amazingly, even though that seems, I think, more complex to people, this domino thing is several times like up to an order of magnitude more complex because of the scale and that's the challenge i need to figure out for the youtube video yeah yeah, yeah. because they have little like fisher price toys that yeah. can do like 20 dominoes in a row and uh, sometimes you're like pre-sensitive to comments i know people are like Pfft. I had this toy when I was like 10, lame, right? <laughs> so it's like, you're but, already mad at a guy yeah, two I'm, months I'm from now. I'm already angry at like, <laughs> these stupid commenters. <laughs> so it's like, it's helpful sometimes to have that sensitivity because so, you know how to like frame the video to get ahead of that. 
right? Mm-hmm. The obvious kind of, yeah. So, so I, I, now I'm sort of I'm having this fantasy. I'm picturing you at a cocktail party with a bunch of older adults yeah. and them saying, what do you do? Yeah. And <laughs> you saying, I'm a YouTuber, and they're thinking, oh, that's a really cute yeah. young man. Yeah. Uh, what are you going to do for a real job? Yeah. Um, and then I imagine, I picture in my head you telling them what you make from YouTube videos and watching their jaws hit the ground. Well, uh, yeah. It's, I don't go to that. No, of course I, not. Yeah, of course, course no, we don't but, like swing our dicks around saying. No, no, but you're absolutely right. Like, it's such an issue. You get pat on the head by adults. By, yeah. Not that you're not an adult. No, but no, like, no, by, no, no, no. You're a hundred. This is such a true thing. And this is like almost one of the reasons for doing TV, sadly. It's because when you say like, oh yeah, I'm a YouTuber. You're like, oh, that's adorable. My grandson has a YouTube channel. And there's no non-douchey way to defend mm-hmm. yourself in that position. Because you're like, no, 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 it's like different. I get bored. Like, there's just nothing you you're can a, do. You're a steam communicator. Uh, yeah. But, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I think, like, yeah. Generally, if, like, someone asks me on an airplane, I'll just be like, uh, I, I do some science communication. Yeah. Like, yeah. I won't even... I mean, sometimes if it gets into it, I'll say it, but like, it's such a complicated thing to explain without sounding lame. And it's a very... It's a... It's a there's, but a, unless whole you're talking co- to there's someone a whole bunch of conversational years. trees that grow out of just the admission. Yeah, but right? that's actually come back to, once I said that to a dude on a plane who's sitting next to me, and it's like, I, I feel like they're obligated to ask me a follow-up question yeah. if I say like, oh, I make YouTube videos. So I was like, oh, I just do like some science stuff. Uh, and that was it. And then like uh, a couple people came up and had seen me on the flight. or were like, hey, could I have a picture? <laughs> and then after that, he's like, uh, oh, hold up. What do you do? <laughs> Science communication. Science communication, baby. <laughs> I, um, early in Mythbusters, I was asked to be Captain Nemo for the Coney Island Mermaid Parade, oh, which amazing. is how they opened the beach at Far Rockaway every year oh, in I New see. York City. Mm-hmm. And Patty Darbinville, um, of Sweet Lady Darbinville fame, Cat Stevens' song, and she was on, uh, uh, uh what was the Dennis... Uh, Leary firefighting show. Ah, it's not burn me. It's, it's uh, rescue me. Rescue, rescue yeah. me. Anyway, Patty Darvinville sitting in this rickshaw with me being dragged through New York as mm. part of the mermaid parade. Mm. And when people keep coming up to me at a certain point, and this is like that third season of Mythbusters, she was like, what the hell is that show again you're on? <laughs> now I care. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Now you care. Exactly. Yeah, that's exactly um, it. So I'm assuming you were on Kimmel recently. Mm-hmm. Yep, like two or three weeks ago, yeah. Um, what did you do on the show? Uh, we announced, uh, so this is my first time being on the couch, which oh, is cool. Yeah, congratulations! Yeah. Yeah, 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 so that was fun. It was. It's a lot less work, it turns out, to be right? on the couch. Right? <laughs> no, you never get to sit on the couch. <laughs> yeah, so normally the times I've been on before, I have like a, a bit, you know, I You always have something. to sing for your supper. Yeah, yeah. But Even Gordon like... Ramsay has to go cook something. <laughs> yeah, he doesn't exactly. get to sit on the couch. So this was like, uh, part of it was, I'd wanted to come on earlier to do Team Tree stuff, because, mm-hmm. you know, we'd done the yeah. Team Trees yep. uh, to talk about it. So part of it, he I got to talk partly about Team Trees, because that was right as we had just crossed the finish line. Um, and then we also got to talk about the show, announcing plus Glitter Bomb. So it's like those three things we kind of hit That's in succession. Awesome. It was really fun. It was cool. I, I have only been on Kimmel's show once. He slapped me in the face. Oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> what was it for? We were doing a slow-mo shot of uh, him smacking me in the face. Oh, that's amazing. So there's this very funny bit where um, we're getting ready to go in the rehearsal, and we're chatting about the White House Press Correspondence Center, because the year he hosted it was the year I got to actually go. Oh. Uh, and we chatted about that for a second, and then we're like... Just where now the show's going because you know it's like a freight chain, right? right. Yeah. So now the show's going, they wheel us out. Jamie does this thing, and then it's time for Jimmy to smack me. And you can see it dawn on his face that he's actually about to like assault me. (laughs) And very sweetly, Jimmy goes, I'm sorry. And I'm like, it's cool, man. And he's like, here we go. Whack! <laughs> and how was the hit? Did he hold back? Oh, it was back? a good hit. Good solid good hit. Yeah, yeah. No, no, no. He, he really laid into it. I mean, he did not as hard as Jamie. <laughs> Jamie's smack was much harder. That's amazing. Yeah, he is uh, He's exactly as average. Like, I don't know. You, you have experience meeting people like that a lot more than I do. And I'm sure some are like as advertised and some are like, oh, yeah, he's kind of a jerk. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. It's, a, it's J- a mixed bag. Jimmy, though, he's like the real, like exactly like you could th- like walking up to his office and stuff. He knows all the security guards. He's fist bumping yep. all yep. of them. He's talking about their families. It, he's 
He's just like the real deal. Well, the thing I liked was the White House Press Correspondent Center is totally surreal. Mm. It's totally bizarre. Yeah. The number of weird, famous people from all these different sure. avenues of the world. And so when I said to him, you know, I was there when you hosted it, he was like, oh, cool. And then you could see him think about it. And he goes, wasn't it weird? <laughs> <laughs> Even like, for him. Yeah, that's exactly right. It's totally weird. Yeah. I took a picture with Rick Santorum at that. that. Amazing. <laughs> Have I told that <laughs> story on the podcast? He's a fan, yeah. 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 I didn't recognize him at first because uh -huh. in person, Rick Santorum's handsome. Oh, really? <laughs> I didn't expect that, but charisma's charisma. Charisma's yeah, charisma. Yeah, and we took a picture and uh, his his kids, his, apparently his kids were obsessed with Mythbusters, which is like, I can disagree with this politics, but yeah. it, that's not that's yeah. not bad. That's his right. kids watched the show. Yeah. And then just before the picture, I told him I was diametrically opposed to everything he stood for. <laughs> And he went, great. And we took a picture. Wow. That's amazing. Um, so uh, you're uh, just starting pre-production now. Mm -hmm. So you're starting to outline what you want to do. Yeah, exactly. You're starting to yeah. think about the possible. Are you, are you, are there items on your bucket list that you never thought you'd have the budget to do that you're now getting to explore? Yeah, there's like, um, and again, I'm probably going to get a lot of trouble for this, but who cares? <laughs> uh, there's like... <laughs> Uh, one of the things is we're going to do like, I'm going to kind of be like Ashton Kutcher and punk where he's like, yeah, we're going to have like a Winnebago yeah. of, uh, sweet justice where it'll kind of follow <laughs> us it, wherever the prank is going to be. It'll be there. And yeah. it's, we're going to, we're going to make it look like the Winnebago from Spaceballs, like oh, really nice. run down. Yeah, but yeah, when yeah, you yeah. go inside, it's going to be like super pimped mm. out and super rad, you know, astronaut chairs <sighs> and like a wall of TVs and like. Uh, licorice dispensers from the roof. You push a button and like a, a Reese's Pieces catapult puts it right in my mouth. You know, just stupid, I'm ridiculous so into things. This. Right? this is so awesome. And like, that's kind of like, I, that, that's, I wouldn't get to do that. It's almost like a set. It's almost something yeah. like that. And I'm going to work with like production or what do you call the people who like the set designers mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and will like storyboard yeah. stuff. So that's going to be like fun. Dude, that's fabulous. That's I mean, cool, right? The thing is, is that's an extension of what you do anyway. Like, I wouldn't this be cool if? That, yeah, totally. And, and on my YouTube channel, I probably wouldn't like go to that extreme or I, I tend to not like think so big mm -hmm, uh, mm -hmm. so this will just be a fun experience for me to like see what it's like when you have like a team at your disposal and really really good creative people to like help you and collaborate with like that's, that's the awesome. part I'm pretty excited about I'll bet yeah even though I won't be sleeping for six months oh. like <laughs> it'll make up for it and like <laughs> just be like living off Red Bull <laughs> yeah it's definitely a monk's existence um, and uh, advice. Yes, please. The moment you finish shooting, that's also why the first rough cut usually unhinges you because you're mm -hmm. either in the mid production or you've mm -hmm. just wrapped and right. your brain is kind of spongy. Right. Um, that like month after production, mm -hmm. give yourself a lot of leeway. Oh, just like, like to decompress. Yeah, and... I guess after the fire hose of production, um, when I finished Mythbusters, Patrick Brewster told me that I was going to become unhinged. And she was like, I was on a show for six years. And when I stopped, like the whole world changed and I wasn't ready for it. <laughs> and so this is one production cycle, but still at the end of it, you're going to be like, <laughs> <laughs> so like plan a trip okay, away okay, somewhere okay, or give yourself some time off. What, for Mythbusters then, was it uh, like how, how, how many months were you on and then off? It was just nonstop. Are you serious? It was, Three months on, two weeks off. Three months on, Whoa. two weeks off for yeah. 14 years. Wow. And like, what's a sea of the, you don't, how much is, how many months is a season? Like six months? Who knows? It's, they what, package it's, it it's, it's, it's Discovery, see, you know, Discovery doesn't air seasons like 20 episodes of blah, blah, blah. Right. They want as many as they can get. Got Obviously it. more is better. Mm -hmm. But like, we just shot, oh, basically that was the most we could shoot. Right. Was three week, three months on, two weeks off was what Jamie and I could do without dying right and we built a show around that we made as many episodes as we could per year on that shooting about 42 weeks a year that's crazy <laughs> that seems crazy that's crazy it right? was crazy okay no it was uh, okay in our defense mm. uh we kept bankers hours we were home by six o'clock oh really night. that's was, how did that's how that's how i survived yeah. such a long-term true freight train because you filmed it up here in yeah, the bay we, area we filmed it, part, right? the commute was 10 minutes for both of us oh that's great and so that's what made it sane yeah. keeping because it wasn't six day weeks. It wasn't 15 hour days. Right. It was, it was reasonable. Right. Um, but you know, that was based on all sorts of different factors that yeah. we kind of sculpted and adjusted. And we had the luxury of a show that like had great ratings for over a decade. Yeah. So 
There's a lot of room to perfect the model. Can I just say, by the way, and I know you hear this all the time, and so it like stops moving the needle. But uh, yeah, that show is uh, certainly what I what I the point I want to drive home is like you inspired so many people, myself included. Like a lot of what I do is kind of has a MythBusters angle to it. And what I think is so interesting is like you're not like what you did there wasn't just inspiring people like one to one, but now I'm turning around. And I'm inspiring oh. like the next generation, right? So it's like this concept of like, you never know, like to me, like success, the definition of success to me is like, what is your, what's the net delta of like how much the bet, the world is better because of your influence, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And there's people who are really rich who by the world's definition are successful, but they're like, by my definition, absolute, right? Oh my God. No, I I'm, think totally. there's, there's a few in, in potentially in high positions of power. I'm, you know, I don't know. Yeah. Uh, You're reminding me of the guy I met at TED who has like a 5,000 square foot shop just to himself because he cashed out of like a dot com <laughs> thing and yeah. made millions right. and has 5,000 square feet of tools that he doesn't know how to use right. and almost never uses. Yeah. And it made me enraged to hear that. <laughs> but go ahead. Sorry. But yeah, so anyways, that's a long winded way of saying like, I think what you've done is really cool. You'll never really know the true impact, but like it could go on for generations and like hundreds of years. Right? It always moves the needle. Yeah. You never. You, when you're doing your thing at your best, you're not thinking about how it will land. Right. You're thinking about the story you want to right. tell and the structure of that, but you're never trying to like get a, elicit a specific response out of people. So right. when you That's get right. a really good one, as you know yourself, yeah. Yeah. every single time someone tells you that it, it moved the needle for them, it's powerful and yeah. it's, it's humbling. Yeah. Yeah. So thank you. Okay. You're um, welcome. I love what you do and I love the way you do it. I'm super freaking excited about this show. <laughs> and seriously, if there's any way I can help okay. either with advice or sure, material sure, sure. support, okay. we're awesome. here for you. Excellent. <laughs> That's good to know. And, it's a good uh, place to stop as any. Yeah. I think uh, people who violate social norms, beware. Okay. I have a request. <laughs> okay. Dudes who talk on their cell phones in public. Mm. And women do it too, but really, it's so much more dudes, especially here in the Mission District. Can we workshop it real quick? Yeah. Like, so what do you think? So so people who are talking, is this like on a subway? Is this walking down the street? The uh, A few weeks ago at my local coffee shop, Ritual, mm -hmm. there's a guy literally, you know how you're on the phone, you're on your headphones, yeah. and you're walking around your apartment yeah, yeah. doing that? Yeah. This guy was doing that in a coffee oh, shop. wow. Mm -hmm. Talking... At this volume in a coffee shop going, I don't know, the second funding round might not work if they don't come <laughs> to the table with more money and blah, blah. So, like, I would want, so I love the idea of people actually taking down people's personal information and then calling them. Ah, uh, oh, uh, okay. So, but, like, but that's also kind of unhinged. My friend, a friend of mine was behind a real douchebag uh -huh. at, at a, at a, at the Inglorious Bastards, uh, movie screening with Tarantino here yeah, in the yeah, city yeah. and he was behind this guy and he was watching this guy I'm sorry I'm going to derail this for a That's second <laughs> he's watching this guy chat with his friends yeah, yeah. but constantly tweeting on Twitter sure. and my friend started following him on Twitter <gasps> and saw that what he was doing was every time someone had a good joke he no. would tweet it as his own oh, joke no. No. and he was watching him do this That's like bad. three or four so my friend like at a certain point was able to figure out, because the guy was super insecure, not insecure, uh -huh. his security protocols were terrible. Right, so right. at one point he gave out his phone number and so my friend wrote it down. And a week later, uh, a week later, amazing. the guy said at like a Starbucks and he tweets about being at Starbucks and I'm like working on my screenplay. Yeah. And my friend was like, fuck that guy. <laughs> so he called that Starbucks yeah. and he was like, hey, is so-and-so there? I'm looking for a friend of mine. He's on the laptop. He's probably no. wearing this baseball cap. And they went and got him. And he came over to the phone. He was like, hello? And my friend went, is this so-and-so? He said, yeah. He said, you're a douchebag. And hung up on me. <laughs> so that's more extreme than I think you should get. But uh, what if you what if you could beam their own conversation back to them later? I've yeah. seen people who do like do the, the they mind people or they, they hang around people who are loud on their phones mm -hmm. and their YouTube videos of this. And then they, ah. they engage, like they're on their phone too. And they... They respond to them as if they're having a conversation. Oh, uh, that's funny! Right next to them, right next to them, and so like you see them realize over time, like that's funny. Wait, are you talking to me? And like, no, no, I'm, I'm on the phone too. Yeah, that's good. That, I, yeah, that guy probably wasn't even on the phone. He's just trying to like flex, like, oh yeah, <laughs> let's close the deal for a mil. Yeah, let's oh, totally <laughs> airplanes too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah. so it would be kind of great if after their call, they're listening and it sounds like music or radio, but yeah. then it's actually their own conversation being played back to them. Yeah, that's good. You could do like maybe a speech jammer. <laughs> going back to him or have you seen those pranks which i think are hilarious where 
maybe you follow this guy and where he's at later, you're like, yeah, yeah, I'll fight you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm down at third and fourth. I'm wearing a red shirt and a white hat. Yeah, bring it. Just and that's what the other guy is wearing. <laughs> That's really Isn't good. Isn't that hilarious? You could also, so you can't build, you can't use active jammers in the United States. Oh, really? Because, no. Speech jammers. Oh, not like, speech jammers. You can't use an active uh, radio so, signal right, jammer right, right, right. in FTC the United States because of the FCC yeah. rules. But a passive radio jammer, so suppose someone's out in public talking on the phone and you get like people moving, uh, um, yeah, um, basically they move a Faraday cage around yeah, him yeah, 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 and his yeah, phone yeah. cuts out and they, they basically bring screens near him and shut his phone That'd down. That'd be pretty funny. <laughs> I like that. See, it's like a bounce light. But like, yeah. yeah. I'm sure our comments will be filled with suggestions yeah, 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 yeah. for other violations of social That's right. norms. And uh, we'll take them. Uh, I think we're actually going to put out like, we, we have a bunch that we're doing, but I think this the beauty of this is it this resonates with so many people, kind of like with Mythbusters. Like, what myths would you want it? You guys yeah. would put that call out, right? Yeah, of course. So this is we the same. Like, stuff from Twitter. what what uh what bothers you the most? And let me get like the vigilante justice for you. We so. will include links okay. to all your social feeds Perfect. in the comments below, okay. so people can go and tag you. All right, Mark. Yeah, what a pleasure to have yeah, you. Yes, so it's great to be um, here. I, this I know you don't need anything more on your plate, but mm -hmm. I'm just gonna say it. Mm -hmm. We got to build something together. Okay. All yeah. right. So 2020, okay. let's build something together. Okay, deal. Awesome. Official. Official. <laughs> you heard it here first. Okay. Awesome. See you guys next week. All Bye, right. guys.